Isso. Hello, good evening. Welcome from Barcelona and welcome to an Info for Rhino webinar. Today it's about TRFEM and TR Mesh. This is a pair of new plugins for simulation developed by Matthias Fuchs. And um, both Matthias and Juan Diego will do the, the presentation and a live demo. Matthias is a mathematician uh, with experience in applied geometry, statistics, and simulation. And he has been senior researcher at the code group Zaha Hadid Architects in London, and now it's an independent programmer. And Juan Diego Vargas is an architect holding a master's degree in sustainable architecture from Politecnico di Torino, Polito. And he's on an investigation scholarship at the Debe Research Group and at the Department of Energy, also at the, at the Politecnico Torino. And his research is focused on the development, optimization, and laboratory testing of 3D printed elements to buffer moisture and dissipate heat. This is also uh, the theme of these new plugins. Tier Mesh is a general tetrahedral meshing plugin for TR, TR FEM. And TRFEM is a peer-reviewed heat transfer solver uh, featuring solving for interior exterior boundary conditions with result slicing, isosurf extraction, and other import-export cap capabilities. In this webinar, as mentioned, uh, both Matias and Juan Diego will demonstrate general tetrahedral meshing, and then they will provide a comprehensive introduction to heat transfer simulation in Rhino, covering essential concepts such, a, such as thermal flux, dissipation, transmittance, U-values, and related quantities. Uh, this webinar is being recorded, so if you miss a part of it, uh, you will be able to watch it later on this same link. And there is also a live chat on the right side of your screen. There is a, a live chat panel. Feel free to post there your comments and questions, and then at the end of the webinar, there will be 10, 15 minutes for QA, where uh, I will be collecting um, uh, anything you write there. And then I will ask uh, both Matias and Juan Diego. So welcome Matias, welcome Juan Diego, and thanks for being here. And thanks for having prepared uh, a very dense uh, physics uh, presentation and live demo. And we are eager to see what you what you want to tell us about. Yeah, thanks yeah. a lot, Carlos. Um, we value a lot uh, this this webinar series, and um, thanks uh, everyone for for attending. And uh, don't be uh, don't be scared of that uh, physics lecture. I hope it's not going to be uh, so dense or scary. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, TR Mesh and TRFM is supposed to bring actual physical simulation into directly into Rhino where the design is uh, happening. Um, I will first uh, talk about the goal of TR Mesh and TRFM a little bit, and then I will take you through a whole complete physics simulation in 3D. Um, <clears throat> at the hand of uh, uh, the heat transfer. So um, <clears throat> it's not just physics inspired, it's supposed to be um, the actual most accurate physics simulation um, that you can do. Um, for this, I will give you also a crash course about U values and about conductances and about all those quantities you will have uh, heard of if you're interested in energy uh, efficiency. And at the end, Juan Diego from Torino, who is a great TMS TFM user, will present the 3D print printed clay brick comparative assessment. So we will actually see how to do cutting edge design directly with TMS and uh, TFM. All right. So to get started, um, <clears throat> let's directly jump into Rhino and have a look what we can do. You find all our examples uh, on the website, which are linked um, at the end of these slides. And you can also access the slides here on, on this website here. 
All right. <clears throat> um, this is already a pre-prepared TFM TR mesh demo here at the hand at the uh, um, topic of this I beam here with the plastic insulation in the middle. And um, <clears throat> I'm just going to very quickly mm -hmm. show you how to get started with the Tetra Matthias, You're not sharing screen yet. I'm not sharing the screen. Uh, no. It's on the same screen as the uh, as so I'm am I just sharing the Adobe window? Yeah, you need to click on the share screen button. Yes, I'm share screen. And and I click on my Rhino window. Yeah, but it's not sharing now. Okay, sorry. Yes, so I was in your sure. Rhino screen. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. So this is a pre-prepared analysis of the I beam here, and you can already see what it looks like. So you get the fully volumetric temperature field here together with the ISO surfaces. And I'm just going to show you how the TET meshing is done. And then Juan is going to take you through all the details. And if you want to go through this example again, then um, please look at the uh, example files, which are all online. All right. So when you have, um, in general, just some whatever, some solid here. Then you just select it all. You open up the tier mesh window and I will make this really short. So the idea is that you can, that you have this interactive interface because meshing is something that until now needs to be done interactively. So you select all solids, first of all, we need to have all layers and um, you can put different materials into, into the layers and then TR mesh is going to take the layers from them. You select, you stage for meshing, you get this feedback here, you click OK mesh stage solids. And while it is uh, still meshing, you get the meshing in process. And then the mesh appears. So this took a little longer than expected because in this case, we are using the grid-based measure. Which does it do? Well, it does actually take the surface mesh here and fills it out with a volume mesh. So this is based on FTED wild. And there's another measure, the fuzzy measure, which directly, which is a, a, a new measure and does not try to map the surface mesh exactly. Instead, what it does, okay, let's decrease the resolution a bit. So you have a recommended edge length range and we select, we stage, we select the fuzzy measure And let's choose uh, a more liberal uh, mesh resolution. Okay, let's uh, 
suggest something like seven centimeters. It, in reality, it's going to be a little less than that, let's say six centimeters. And the fuzzy measure is going to scan the geometry with a blue noise mesh, a Poisson disk sampler, which is then filled out with a conforming Delaunay mesh. And here you go. So let's increase the resolution a bit. And the point cloud, instead of trying to map the surface mesh directly, the point cloud tries to scan the surface at a certain distance. And you can see that the fuzzy here is way superior to the traditional one. All right, and then there are certain bake buttons and so on and so on and so forth. But I just wanted to uh, show you how this basically works. And since the goal of this lecture is to take you through an entire physical simulation chain, I will now switch back to the actual theoretical part and we'll show you how to take physical knowledge all the way through into Rhino. All right, um, you can see my PDF again. I hope so. So, all right. No. You... Can you see it? No, you're still sharing only, I think you only shared your Rhino screen. Um, okay, then, sorry for that. Then let's do screen sharing and then this one. So now you should see uh, the PDF. So, yes. okay, great, thanks. <clears throat> yeah, the idea is to enable everyone, not just the engineers, to directly do physical simulation. And the idea is not to, um, <clears throat> to replace an engineer or an energy consultant or to replace professionals, but the idea is to shorten your feedback cycles um, <clears throat> by disabling or by reducing uh, the friction within your company. So the idea is to enable everyone to do tetrahedral meshing directly in Rhino. So some people say, why does one still need meshes? Uh, well, there are so fancy, uh, cool people here who say, okay, we do everything grid free. Um, yeah, this is great. Um, <clears throat> however, when you look at this paper, he only solves the heat equation and actually, his method is uh, equivalent to um, an algebraic multigrid method. And what I take from these kinds of papers here, so this one has just appeared, uh, I think, last year, is that you cannot expect to accurately remesh large geometrical models. You can't ac accurately expect to um, <clears throat> mesh something above, uh, of, uh, say, 100 million tets and so on. But still, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> what we take from this is that, yeah, fuzzy is better. So we have to approximate the geometry. And I think this is what I just tried to demonstrate. Don't try to map your geometry exactly, but just do that kind of approximation that you need. And um, <clears throat> I think the days of TED meshes are far from, far from over. So, TR mesh is uh, supposed to also solve parabolic and uh, hyperbolic PDEs um, <clears throat> or advancing fronts like reaction diffusion, Maxwell, and so on. So I hope to have convinced you at least somewhat that the days of TED meshes are not at all over. And uh, let's now focus on heat transfer instead of uh, general TED meshing. So the topic of insulation is a huge topic. Here, just a few screenshots uh, from the headlines, from the German headlines here. 
the topic of uh, energy efficiency retrofitting has dominated uh, the German headlines now for many months or, uh, or even uh, a year. So you can see data that uh, a bad energy efficiency can reduce the real estate value of building of up to one half. So what you actually buy in Germany is not the building, it's, it's energy efficiency uh, certificate and so on. So I think it's fair to say that energy efficiency retrofitting is by a large margin uh, the largest sub-niche of architectural uh, engineering these days. So you take the numbers, there are uh, up to or even more than 100 buildings to be remodeled or retrofitted in Germany alone in this year and so on. And what applies, by the way, to insulation against heat also again, uh, applies to insulation against cold Likewise, right? So, all right. <clears throat> so typical questions are, what are the energy losses at a given temperature? Do we even need insulation? So, so many buildings are over-insulated, leading to a lot of, uh, <clears throat> yeah, even political ramifications. Um, <clears throat> then there is the important question to avoid more growth when there is water condensation or even uh, freezing. When, it, when a building component gets wet. And um, <clears throat> the dominant physical mechanism is conduction as opposed to uh, convection and radiation, at least inside the material. So let's post very conservative estimates for the boundary values. And then the dominant mechanism is going to be the conduction. So why is this a good, why is this even doable. The nice thing about this differential equation, about the heat equation, is that a large component, like an entire building, can be split up into separate components, which are called heat uh, thermal bridges, which are uh, characterized by adiabatic boundary conditions. So <clears throat> As soon as you can identify a component such that the ISO, such that the temperature gradient always stays within the component and does not leave it, you can compute its thermal loss separately. So this is why <clears throat> um, this kind of finite element analysis is much better behaved mathematically and numerically than uh, say, for instance, structural uh, or elastic analysis. All right, so you um, know we have the temperature, we have the temperature gradient, we have the thermal conductivity, which is a material property. And the most important quantity to know is the thermal flux, which is a vector field. And even though it's a vector field, it has the unit watt per square meter. So you think that what is a scalar, but what per square meter actually has a direction, and that's a vector field. And that's all you need to know. By the way, all this introduction to this differential equation just uh, also applies to the diffusion equation, which mathematically in the steady state case is completely the same um, when we replace certain terms with others. So when we replace the temperature with the water vapor concentration, then we would end up with um, the diffusion equation and so on. So what I want to say is that all of these explanations are just a, are just a, a basic use, of, are just an example for how to carry such a physical analysis through. And it can, uh, if you follow this one, you will uh, also learn how to do, how to solve um, other differential equations. So the thermal connectivity is the basic material property here. And then energy conservation dictates that the energy per volume can arise from nothing, so the divergence of the high heat flux must be zero. And if the material is homogeneous, then not only the divergence of the heat flux is zero, but the divergence of the temperature gradient itself is zero. But the divergence of a gradient is its Laplacian. So the heat equation just says the Laplacian of the temperature is zero. In other words, the temperature scalar field is um, a harmonic scalar field, 
which leads into very deep math words. So in, for instance, it implies that it's infinitely smooth. Uh, it's mathematically, there can never be any corner inside the material of the isosurfaces. They're always guaranteed to be smooth just by physical mathematical law and so on. All right. Now, you know all these properties for a box or for basic insulation here. Um, <clears throat> and with what I said, you are able to translate all these properties into 3D. So for instance, the thermal loss of a box that is cold on one side and hot on the other is measured in, in what? And it's just given by taking our temperature gradient, which is then always the same. So we can take its magnitude. We can multiply it with the connectivity. And well, this is just then this value here. And because it's um, because it, it has a cross-section area, our box, we can divide it conveniently. And then we just end up with kappa over D. And this is what people call the U value. Now you say, okay, the U value, well, this is not the formula, no. Uh, yes, sometimes people take surface resistances and so on into the U value, but this is actually just all you need to know about the conductive part of the U value. And then there are other quantities. The most important one is the conductance, um, which is then no more something per square meter, but is a quantity associated to the box itself. And then there is also uh, some absolute resistance, absolute because it does refer to an, a building component and not just to something per square meter or time square meter. Um, these are the basic quantities that you're familiar with and you can translate them one one-on-one -on -one to the 3D case. So instead of just taking times the cross-section area, you integrate over the cross-section. So this is a surface integral. And uh, then you also get the conductance and you only have the values for the whole component and not just values per square meter. So if you sell insulation, you are interested in advertising the insulation in something in, in terms of the resistance relative to a certain Cross section, but if you sell, if, if you're an architect and you want to sell a superior design, then you cannot sell a U value. Then you can only sell something for the whole component, and that would be the thermal loss or its conductance or the absolute uh, resistance, if you prefer to take just uh, its reciprocal value. And if it turns out to be a box, then actually. Um, the value we have reported is the area times the U value. So yeah, all these quantities are, are yeah relatively uh, straightforward. So for instance, um, there's the basic in example here uh, in, in the paper. So you can plug in some numbers and um, <clears throat> you might know the Glaser method, which does treat the case where the vector field always points in the same direction, but is not always the same. So this is the 1D case. Now TFM, TMesh do the absolute 3D case for you. The, the Glaser method um, also solves for the water vapor concentration and um, the water vapor pressure using the ideal gas law. And we'll also tell you about the saturation water vapor pressure, when you compare them, you, you find out if it, if it condenses or not. This is also done in uh, tier FEM, but this is another topic. So just one minute um, on the mathematical side. Yes, this is the actual uh, equation here, which is analogous to the diffusion equation here. So if we plug in other quantities, then, then we see that the diffusion equation has the same mathematical structure. And for those of you who are interested in the inner workings of a finite element method, this kappa here will just end up here uh, in this location of the weak formulation. And um, <clears throat> the stiffness matrix can di directly be read off. So all of this works extremely well because in the steady state case, when you set DTU equal to zero, you end up with uh, an elliptic um, operator. Please, uh, yeah, if this is interest, interesting for you, then um, please have a look at the paper where everything was written down. All right, thanks a lot. So um, this was my physics crash course. Please leave uh, feedback here. I don't know if this Discord channel will catch on or not. 
Um, but yeah, in any case, let's try it. Of course, on Food for Rhino, you can uh, write me uh, an, an email. Um, Juan Pis will also leave your email later. And then um, uh, that's also the YouTube channel. It's not going to be free forever, but for now it is still free. Enjoy it, please enjoy it while it is still free. And um, yeah, look out for ISO norms, look out for water concentration, convection radiation, a lot of topics. So we have an exciting uh, future coming up towards us. Thanks a lot. And um, yeah, uh, I I'm happy to hand over the word to the great Juan Diego Valles, who, will, uh, who is a great user sure. of the TFM. Thanks. Thanks, Matias. Just a few questions on the fly before sure. uh, Juan Diego uh, continues with the webinar. Um, yeah, uh, Calmantis asks if there is a Mac compatible version or if you plan it for the future. Um, some <clears throat> uh, so, sorry, Mac compatible Mac Mac, Mac but for the oh, Apple Mac. Mac. Oh, yeah. oh, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, TRFEM already uh, runs on Mac. TR Mesh is a little difficult because it's uh, it's MFC based. Um, <clears throat> so it really relies on the Win32 API, but Yes, I plan to release a Grasshopper version of the Mesh, but it's not going to be as capable as TR Mesh. But um, I plan to release uh, Mesh directly in Grasshopper, and that one can be compiled also for Mac. Um, <clears throat> however, I would ask those people on the Mac to write me an email because I will just give them hand them privately out my my experimental builds. Thanks. And uh, there is another question by Lita Garcia, although Juan Diego already answered it, but uh, she asks if TRFEM uh, can solve a heat transfer equation of an assembly with PCM materials. Mm -hmm. um, uh, a brick? But um, <clears throat> yes. Yes, in theory it can. Yeah, yeah. Um, you have to know the the conductivities of your materials, and um, the boundary conditions. And um, yes, so one was going to to demonstrate that. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Thanks. So Juan, thank you. Your <laughs> and no, the, the thing is that for PCM materials, like phase change materials, uh, since they are dynamic, uh, then. Uh, I, I guess the solver, since it only solves the steady state equation, it would only solve the um, uh, thermal conductivity at a single phase and not uh, dynamically. But uh, okay, so now I will go ahead with the demo. Uh, Matthias, can you please? Stop sharing your screen. Sure. Now I'll go on. Okay, thank you. Okay, so do you see my screen now? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay, perfect. So for this dem demonstration, as uh, Matthias and Carlos mentioned uh, previously, well, one of our main goals uh, at our research group is to use TRPEM and TRMesh to assess build 3D printed building components. For today, what we brought is a uh, this is what we called Voronoi brick. Uh, this is just a shape, um, a solid brick that was cutted with some Voronoi cells by using a grasshopper. Uh, definition in order to assess uh, TR mesh and TR FEMS uh, capabilities to um, adapt to not regular geometries. So now um, here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly repeat the meshing process with uh, TR mesh, and then we'll go ahead and see how TR Sorry, tier mesh, and then we're, we're going to see how tier fem 
inside Grasshopper works. So first, what we have to do is have a watertight geometry, uh, B-Rep, completely closed in order to um, uh, work. So here on tier mesh uh, interface, we can choose between these two types of meshing procedures, the grid base and the fuzzy. The fuzzy mesh here is a Matthias new uh, meshing procedure and the it's very good for um, adapting to uh, irregular geometries. While the grid base it can work very well for regular geometries, uh, such as solid blocks or this kind of stuff that is not uh, so crazy. For this uh, brick, we're gonna um, uh, use the fuzzy measure. Uh, one of the key parameters here is gonna be the target edge length. Uh, as you can see um, here, um, TR mesh already recommends you uh, target edge length, and depending on the mesh resolution, then um, you're going to have a, a different reliability and precision on the results obtained further by um, on your simulations done with TRFM. So for now, I'm just going to try to do it in a not so high uh, resolution so that you can see how it works. So now that we defined the target edge length we want, we click on a uh, stage. Oh, no, sorry, you have to first click on stage selected uh, solid for meshing. And when you see this wireframe, this blue wireframe preview, that's when you know you can proceed and go ahead. So now we we go and uh, select our target edge length. In this case, I'm gonna just go ahead with uh, this one to see how fast it goes. It also is gonna depend, of course, on the your computer's processor. So let's see. We click on OK Mesh Stage Solids. You're gonna see here the meshing is in process. It's gonna tell you, and you're also gonna see some uh, purple lines and dots that are gonna indicate the meshing is ongoing. So you see here, and after it becomes yellow with the purple dots on it, you will see, you will know that the meshing process has been finished. So, and you can also see here on the um, your mesh interface. Now, like there are also other processes you can do here that you would you can explore by yourselves. Uh, you can further increase the mesh resolution. You can also decrease it. But for example, there is this uh, meshing procedure that Matthias included, which is an open source. Uh, measure that can help to enhance the mesh quality. So here you can see the mesh quality, the higher the number is, of course, the mesh is going to be better. The lower it is, well, the means the, the mesh quality is not so good. So after having your mesh already done, and after you're happy with it, what you have to do is go ahead and uh, select the boundary conditions. So we're gonna, in this case, I'm just gonna go and select what is my outer face, so which is the uh, outside in this case. And you you do it uh, with control shift, so for clicking on your B rep space, and then you're gonna click here in this button that says select faces as outside. It turns blue, so you're gonna know it. Uh, chose it already. You you have to be careful doing this because it seems you can uh, select it several times and it could mess up with your calculations. But in any in any case, if you feel it didn't work or that something's strange, you can clear it and restart from scratch. So now yeah, I'm gonna click the complete opposite face. And this is gonna be my interior. 
Okay, so now we have um, our boundary conditions ready. So this means our mesh is practically ready for taking it to a TRPAM. So here now you will click here on bake mesh to dock for TRFM. There is also this button, but be very careful with it because if you have a mesh with a lot of tetrahedra, then it could crash your computer. So <laughs> be very careful about it and use it wisely if you want to. For now, I'm just gonna go ahead and click on this one. Okay, so now you can see this red mesh. It means that it's it's been baked. So I'm gonna clear the dead meshes and I'm gonna just uh, turn off this layer so that you can see the mesh. This is the result we got. It looks quite nice and you can see it adapted really good to our geometry. So now, uh, we're gonna go to Grasshopper to see how TRFM works. Then uh, what we have to do here is okay, we open our Grasshopper definitions. You can find uh, these definitions on the example link we, we I shared with you on the chat already. It was also in Matthias' presentation. In this case, uh, you're gonna find this after downloading and installing TRFM. This is the different components you have. You have also some examples and some other components that you're gonna find interesting. But for this demo, uh, we brought um, a pre-assembled uh, algorithm so that we don't waste so much time um, doing it from scratch. So what we would do in this case is, of course, we, we're gonna bring our mesh component. And then here, having selected our mesh, we just uh, set it. Okay, this means that our mesh is now ready for being assessed with TRFM. So this is how you would do it from scratch. However, uh, since like, as I already told you, for getting more accurate results, your mesh is gonna have to have a much higher uh, resolution. So for this webinar, we pre-meshed some uh, samples so that we could have accurate results. And we're not gonna use this coarse mesh uh, we just created. Okay, I'm just going to delete the one we just did for being able to display now our pre-meshed uh, Voronoi definition. So this is how it will look. So um, what we do here is uh, we're gonna connect it on the TRFM uh, reader. This is gonna read our vertexes, tetrahedra, and uh, the thermal conductivities uh, provided, and also which are our hot vertexes and our cold vertexes. Something very important here that Matthias explained to me is that uh, in this case, uh, what Rasopper does is it reads the GUID of this uh, rhino element and that's how then it proceeds to perform all its operations so now this is uh, i'm gonna move this aside for a little bit so these are uh, the main parameters you can set so you can set uh, here your thermal conductivity which is given in watts over meter Kelvin. In this case, I just provided an average thermal, um, thermal conductivity for clay components. Here you can also define the number of isosurfaces that um, TRFM is gonna show. 
and you define as well your boundary conditions. So the temper, the outdoor temperature and the indoor temperature, which in this case, it's minus 13.1 and 20 inside. What it does here, now, now we have our solver. Our solver is the one to, that calculates the, the temperatures on the ISO surfaces. So I'm gonna show you here, these are the different ISO surfaces. So in, in this case, we calculated 30 of them, but you can play with that uh, so that like do it how you uh, consider it better. Uh, and what this does is that the um, TRFM solver uh, gives a, the temperature on every single isosurface to then, by using the formulas Matthias explained earlier, give us the thermal loss in watts and also the thermal resistance. Um, okay, so this is like how it looks on this um, and this component. I don't know if I'm missing something, Matthias, to explain here, or if we could proceed to um, the next step. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can proceed. I think it's it's uh, pretty clear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we now that we played with this um, more or less crazy geometry. Uh, I'm gonna show you some others, uh, some other geometries uh, we prepared for for the webinar. The idea is to make a, a very fast demo on how you could uh, assess different uh, thermal losses in components with different parameters. So here, what you can see are other uh, four more brick uh, definitions with a more regular uh, infill. So this is just the kind of brick you would see uh, everywhere, which is just uh, an extrusion. But what we did was to modify different parameters. We modified its uh, uh, their infills and see what uh, was the impact on the thermal loss. So here you can see that it really has an impact on it. So we have three different uh, definitions. And of course, this is just the thermal transfer. The, if, in order to have a um, more thorough assessment, you would have to couple this with the um, uh, finite element analysis for structural purposes. And then you would, I guess you can have a very nice balance between heat transfer and structural performance. Also, Matthias told me he's working on a measure for Grasshopper that hopefully he's gonna release later on so that we can uh, make um, optimization processes on directly inside Grasshopper by make, uh, modifying different parameters. So something I wanted to show last is this uh, simple box. This is the gross, this is a box with the gross dimensions of all the bricks we've shown until now. And in order to uh, see how uh, it works, how TRFM works, we also made this um, small expression here that is a, a steady state heat transfer equation for si simple geometries. Of course, this will only work in boxes such as this one, not in uh, geometries that are crazy as others. So you can see here that the expected heat transfer would be 3.37 watts. And here we can see that the result TRFM gives us is 
uh, 37 as well. So you have to play a lot with this, with the mesh resolution and everything in order to get a um, good results. And here you can also see how the meshing process affects the results. So we have these three different mesh meshes from the same box with three different resolutions and they threw completely different results. Uh, so this is something to play with until you know you, you're reaching um, uh, accurate values. So yeah, that was it. Um, he, these uh, files, you're, you can find them in the examples provided um, by, by Matthias. You can play around with them. And of course, if you have any, any questions or any suggestions, feel free to contact him. Uh, the feedback from everyone is gonna be very helpful to uh, keep uh, improving this very nice pair of plugins we have right here. Thank you very much. Cool, many thanks, Juan Diego. A uh, very nice live demo. I think now we all understand much better how TR Mesh and TR FEM works. There are a couple of questions. Uh, first one by Ivan Miko. How to model with more than a material layer? The V-Rep needs to touch with each other? Yes, exactly. So if you have several materials, then TR Mesh is going to look at your material table and is going to record its index in the material table. They all have to touch each other. You can check this with a Boolean intersection. Um, and uh, so that their, their union is then <clears throat> the, uh, equal to the result. And you get then the material indices out of the TR FEM TR mesh component inside Grasshopper. And if you like, you can use them directly as the tetrafs. And if you don't like, then you use another table. Okay. So the, the idea is you just need to know the connectivity of each of those materials. And if they are at the beginning of your material table, say just index zero and one, then you just uh, supply directly a list. Otherwise you just uh, manufacture your own list of, of tetrafs and then you specify the conductivity per tetraf. So it's, it's pretty easy and it's also pretty uh, directly evident from, from the examples, or at least it should be directly evident. Okay, thank you. And there is one more question by Enes Altunok. Is it possible to choose, modify individual nodes or edges for setting the boundary? Or for now, is it limited to phase selection? Uh, yeah, well, um, <clears throat> you can modify it in, in, in Grasshopper, right? So um, <clears throat> in TR Mesh, the way to just click on, on one phase that's a, that that's a convenience function, but if that these are not the boundary conditions you want to apply, but you have fancier boundary conditions, then just supply those the indices of your vertices directly in in Grasshopper. So you just have to know which vertices are hot and cold, and that's all. Okay, thank you. I think there are no more questions. Maybe we'll give one minute to the viewers in case there are more questions. Well, they are thanking you for the webinar. Uh, remember that this webinar is being recorded, so you can, if you miss one part of it, just reload this YouTube live page um, because it's automatically recorded. Um, yeah, next week there will be another webinar, but this time about Twinner, right? It's another plugin by Matthias. Yes. Uh, we will announce it in shortly, probably between tomorrow and Monday, right? Yes. And yeah, I think that's it for today. People are happy with your with your plugin, with your explanations, with your demo. Okay, one more question. 
by Maria Jose Salinas. Uh, the meshes we've created can be tried in TR mesh later on separately. Do you think it would be possible that this mesh independency study could be turned into an automated process? Um, so the the TED mesh will survive, can, can be saved and will then be retrieved. This is because the TED mesh is saved in terms of uh, the user data string that is attached to each object. Um, <clears throat> So far, the editing session is not yet saved. And so far, you cannot continue later in, in TR Mesh and, and refine it, but uh, this might change in a later edition. I'm not sure if this was the question. Let's see if Maria answers. Otherwise, again, feel free to contact Matthias uh, directly. But there is one last question by Lina Garcia. Uh, do you plan to work with transient heat transfer equations in the future and include other materials properties as sensible heat and latent thermal energy? Uh, yeah, for, for the transient uh, heat equation, um, <clears throat> this is a possibility. However, it's um, quite a bit more difficult because it's not an elliptic equation from the mathematical side. Um, so the, the solving theory is a little more involved and mainly I'm targeting architectural audience and a, a building usually has enough time to adapt to exterior conditions. So <clears throat> it is a possibility, um, but it would require a, a, a very, very specific use case. So if it interests you, then please please write me an, an email, and then we have, have to, to to focus and uh, on on just that exact use case. Um, I'm I'm probably not going to uh, implement a very general transient heat uh, heat solver, but just a okay. specific one for it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Maria Jose Salinas says that yes, you answer uh, her question uh, ah, right. as expected. So thank you. Right. <laughs> Okay, then I think we'll leave it here. Many thanks again. Uh, yeah, thanks to you, Carlos. And, uh, we will wait for your next versions of, of TR, TR Mesh and TR FEM with the, well, with the feedback you are getting from, from existing uh, testers of, the, of your plugins. And have a nice evening in Europe a nice day in in the states and in latin america and see you next week in a new webinar thank you very much carlos and matthias thanks everyone thank you thanks carlos bye -bye. thanks bye bye bye, -bye.